Hey guys, another Wild Eye releasing review for you all. This one being called High 8 Independent Horror 8 or something like that. Independent 8. Um, Horror Independent 8. There we go. And um, it's an anthology film. It's got eight different stories from shot on video directors such as uh, Todd Sheets, uh, Ron Blanc, and um, a bunch of other people uh, that are notorious for shot on video horror films from the um, late 80s, 90s, early 2000s. And uh, just eight different stories from these guys. And I was let down by this movie. I really wanted something a lot of fun. And out of, out of all those stories, out of the eight stories, I think there was two that I enjoyed. Um, the wraparound story uh, is these people making a movie, making a horror movie. And it's just these two guys filming it with this girl running uh, from like a slasher. And it's no way connected to any of the stories. All it is is just them filming it. And in between shots, it cuts to a story and tells you a story. Um, now, I couldn't find a listing of all the different stories. Uh, I looked online and I, I found like a couple things about it, but I couldn't find an actual list of each one of the title of the stories. Um, so it's it's really hard for me to remember every single story that I, that was in it. Um, so I'm just going to go over the ones that stand out to me, the stories that stand out to me, or the ones that I liked or didn't like about it. Um, the the first story um, I didn't care for at all. It did remind me of a one of the most like lowest budget shot on video films. Um, it was about this man who is like a rapist killer, and his wife sees him and catches him and starts doing the same thing. And he just she just follows her follows him around, and together as a team they start raping and killing um, innocent people. Um, that's all it was. This is called like the switchblade. They they do it with the switchblade. And that's it. That's all it was. Um, didn't care for it all. Kind of silly. Kind of stupid. Um, not really fun at all. If you, if you know what I mean. It just wasn't fun. Um, then it jumps into another story, and um, this one was actually. Uh, I'm not, I don't think it was the second story, but it was definitely my favorite story of the entire uh, film. Um, it's this guy who is like an. He looks like an action hero star. He's dressed like an action. He's got like the army shirt on, a bandana. Um, and he, he's inside a, like a retirement home or something, and he's trying to save all these old people from a zombie outbreak. Now, the funny thing about this is it starts off like it's going to be an action, like a parody of an action film with, like, he, like, he starts punching these people, and it's like, <laughs> and, uh, it just makes these funny, like, sound effects, and he, uh, he starts rescue, trying to rescue this, his grandma, but he acts like his voice acting and his the way he moves and stuff is very similar to the way Ben Stiller acts in Dodgeball or Zoolander where, you know, he breaks in and these people grab onto him and he's like, Hey, where's my grandma? Huh? And it's like, it's really funny. It's, it's hilarious to watch. Um, I didn't realize what it was supposed to be. It was, I thought it was supposed to be taken serious at first. And I was like, oh, God, this is horrible. And then I saw the comedy in it and I started laughing at everything that they were doing. Um... The only thing, the only negative part about that one story is the old folks always reference horror movies. Like this this one guy, uh, he does it like twice in a row. And it was just every time that they referenced a horror movie or a line from a horror movie, I got really kind of cringed a little bit. Like um, there's a scene where a zombie starts to attack this old woman. And the old man is like, hey, hey they're going to get you, Barbara. And I was just like, oh, come on. Seriously, you get it done without the references. Uh, there's also, they reference the kick ass and chew bubble gum line from They Live um, and a couple other ones. And it just, every time they did, that they did one, I was just like, oh, I don't want it. Uh, but that was the best story of the entire bunch. Um, by far the best story. Uh, the, there's another story called Bloodgasm. Um, I believe this one was actually the second story where this guy goes in, he works at a video store and it's closing down. And so his friend gives him all the VHS tapes and stuff, or this box of VHS tapes that's not labeled with anything. So he goes home and he puts one in, and it starts off with a thing called bloodgasm. And it only lasts just a couple of minutes, and it's just like this guy cutting open this person, pulling out the intestines and the heart, and the, the tape ends. It was never finished. And this guy is like, he just he loves it. He just keep, can't take his eyes off it. He watches it over and over and over again. And he starts seeing the the coolness of the movie he wants to finish it so he hunts down the director and finds out that the director actually killed somebody in order to make that movie and he's like have you ever not seen any of the actors well there's none because that's them being killed on screen so 
he wants the guy to finish it, but the guy doesn't want to do that because he doesn't want anything to happen. So that guy takes matters in his own hands and starts doing that to the director to finish the movie. Um, I guess that's kind of the spoiler for the entire film or the entire story, but that's all there really is to it. There's not much about it. Um, the wraparound story um, is not very well done, I don't think. like It's, it's just like... Like I was saying earlier, it's just shots of them filming like a little movie or stuff. And at the end of it, she's trying to uh, um, like go back and get her bottle of water when she left somewhere. And they go to find her because they hear her scream. She she turns around and she's like all demon fight and everything like that. And I mean, it was okay, but all it was was just her running back, looking like a demon, and then the the story, the wraparound story ends. And I'm actually going to try to get a listing here real quick and see what other stories there are. Okay, so there's another story uh, where this guy is chasing or stalking this jogger. She's like overweight, she's extremely big, and he, it seems like he's going to, like, he's like fantasizing about it. He follows her everywhere she goes, and it's over the top. I mean, like, to the point where he is like underneath her chairs like looking up at her and everything and it's done so comically and so over the top and I just thought it was so dumb and then he gets to it where it's like it cuts into her house and he sneaks up behind her and he grabs onto her and she freaks out she screams and he, she's like what do you want he goes do you know what time it is and that actually made me laugh I thought it was really funny it was so stupid but it made me laugh and then he starts to walk out the door, and he's like, thank you for telling me what time it is. And this guy reaches in and breaks his neck, snaps his neck. And he's like, he steps in, he's like, ma'am, are you okay? I've been chasing this guy all the way through town. He's been stalking you and following you the entire time. And then it turns out that this guy is the bad guy. And it's, it should have ended with the guy breaking his neck. Like, if, it would, if, it, if the story would have stopped with the other guy breaking his neck and then saying, hey, are you okay? That would have been hilarious. But the fact that it kept going, it turned into like this weird rape story, and it just was so stupid. Like it was just not even fun. It was not. I couldn't even watch it hardly because it was so just so stupid. Like the dialogue was dumb. Uh, this way it was done was dumb, and I would have liked it a lot better if it would just end it right there. Um, there's another story where um, this guy. <coughs> excuse me. Sorry about that. Uh, there's another story where this guy is watching a uh, a horror movie or something on on TV, and his wife is like, "Please turn it off. I don't want to see all the blood. Just turn it off." And then she starts talking to him about it like his ex girlfriend, and he's like, "She's like, what 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 would you do for her?" And he's like, "I would do anything for you. I wouldn't do anything for her." And then he goes to his basement, and the ex girlfriend's locked up in the basement, and the girlfriend, his his new girlfriend and stuff, has her kidnapped, and he, she's going to try to kill her. And then he's like, I'm going to save you. Just just, be, just stay right there. I'm going to save you. And then she gets mad because he's trying to help his ex-girlfriend. And it's just it's just weird story. I didn't care for it too much. I thought it was really stupid. Uh, that's all it was, was just her kidnapping the girl, and that's it. Um, I don't remember any other stories. I can't remember the titles of them at all. Um, I don't remember what happened in any other stories. Uh, there's eight of them, and they were, they were pretty short. Um, so, I mean, I covered the majority of the stories, and... The, the the one with the the zombie outbreak at the retirement home with the old folks, definitely the best one. Check it out just for that one right there. I, I know this review was all over the place and a little bit dodgy and everything like that. I'm really sorry. Um, but it was a really, to me, I, I found this movie to be a little bit hard to review because there were so many different stories and most of them weren't good. So I found it really hard to try to find the best things about these stories. So... Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully you guys will check it out specifically for that one particular story of the zombie outbreak. Uh, if that one doesn't sell you the story, then if you don't like that one story, you won't like anything else in the movie. So, uh, see you guys.